Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of MADE. My guest with me today is Lon Haber. He is an artist of communications, nature whisperer and wizard, Archduke of the Forest and Sea, key lime pie expert, and Bermuda Triangle native. And on the side, he's also an actor and a PR specialist. <laughs> um, Lon wants to talk about The Carol Burnett Show, The Family, Password Elephant Story 1 and 2, I guess, as you would say, right? Because we see two versions of the elephant story in this in this clip. And it's from YouTube to access it. And for those of you who don't know, Carol Burnett aired back in 1967 to 1978, but was on repeats for many, 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 many years. And um, she is, what would you say, a comedic genius? What would you say? Yeah, I would definitely <laughs> say that she's a comedic genius. And I mean, as, as is, was everybody on that show. Yeah. But yeah, the thing about the Carol Burnett show is there wasn't anything really like it before. And there hasn't been one since. since. Nope. Definitely Taped not. Taped in front of a live studio audience. Right. Like at least 50% of each show was improv, if not more. And this one in particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll get. I mean, we'll get into that. Yeah, yeah. So, this particular episode here, I had to. Um, so it's the skit is, I guess, later became a show. Mama's Family, right? Vicky Lawrence plays Mama. Um, Carol Burnett plays Eunice, right? Her daughter, and right. we have Dick Van Dyke is in this episode and he's um renting the garage from them yes right? like he's renting a room but it's the garage or whatever yes yeah, an old friend of ed's and who that's dan that's dick van dyke and then mickey who is ed's employee at the hardware store and mickey is played by tim conway my mom right. like could not look at him without laughing like basically he he's i mean they're all great um they are playing a game of password. Well, also too, just to preface this, you know, Mama is a little annoyed at Dan. He drinks, he's drinking a lot. And um, Eunice, I think like, she's interested in him, it, right? In the beginning, yeah. right? That's what, that was what I, I was getting. I think you could say so. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the word they're trying to get their partners to guess in this particular part is ridiculous. And Eunice gives Mickey the clue word laughable. And after pondering for a bit, he says elephant. So Eunice scolds him for his bizarre answer. Then basically Conway launches into a wild ad lib story about a circus elephant and goes on and on and on. Now, this is the part, this, I assume why you picked this because Carol Burnett just is the first one to lose it. And the cast barely keeps together through the sketch. And that was just one take. In between takes, I guess the director gave the actors a note, the elephant story would be different in the next filming and said, good luck. Um, the next elephant story was even wilder than the first, and we'll go into what they are. Carol Burnett and Dick Van Dyke like can't stop themselves from laughing. Connor himself breaks a couple of times and Vicki Lawrence, who famously never broke character, ha had to hide her face for a moment. So let's get into the elephant stories. So the first one, <laughs> trying to remember. The first one was that, he remembers the circus. There was a dwarf and an elephant, and the rumor was they were lovers, <laughs> right? Right. And he said the elephant would wear a tutu. <laughs> and it's his delivery. I can't do it. it. It really is his delivery. It's not just the story. It's the way he delivers it. And um, then the elephant <laughs> sat on the dwarf, right? Right. He killed the dwarf. But then did they shoot the elephant? Because he killed, something with, they killed the elephant, but somehow the elephant died. I think so. Yeah. Because then he says they buried them together. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. 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 Because of the rumor. So they lose it in that one. I believe that was the one that actually aired on the show. But then elephant, this elephant story number two to me was even funnier. Oh my gosh, it is. I, 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 I would say that's, it's 
it may be the best ever outtake in television history to date. Yeah. yeah. I don't um, know what else. I mean, you know, and also with these group, this group that spent their whole time trying to, most of their careers trying to crack each other up and not lose character. Mm hmm. They all lose it. This is like the they only time. Yeah. But the second one is for sure the best. I think it's been played so much that you, yeah. Yeah. So, all, but Vicki Lawrence actually, Vicky, she's, she's the one person who doesn't lose character. And I think this was one of her first shows, one of the first times she appeared on Carol Burnett show. But she does, she does uh, for that one yeah. moment, so she, she goes from being the strong one to just, and then, of course, Dick Van Dyke falls off the sofa. Everybody. Yes. So the second story is there were <laughs> el Siamese elephants who were connected right. by the trunk. It, now, by the trunk. Oh. And so, it, again, it's his delivery. He's like, when they, I felt, but we felt bad because when they would pull back, their <laughs> their trunks would would connect and would go like this, and then a monkey would come and hang on the trunk, right, and spin or something. I Does think wait, like that? the monkey. He did a dance of some sort. Did he? He did. Um, he did the merengue. I think he did the <laughs> oh, merengue. Yeah. He did yeah. the merengue down the, the merengue. And and the two elephants. Yeah, the you know because they were connected at the trunk. Whenever they went to make a noise, all uh -huh. they could do was honk. Yeah, he, he makes the best do, noise. Yeah. He makes the best noise to say. See, he, there were these two elephants at the. <laughs> yes. yes. Can't can't do it. Yeah. So. I yeah, I can't, I can't either. Well, yeah, and about the breaking character, not only like the, they were, Carol, that was a big thing for her. She's like, I want these, you know, characters to be true. And, 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 and she was the first one to lose it. So basically when, okay, so they, he tells the story about the Siamese elephants. They've all like basically lost it. I don't know if Dick Van Dyke fell off the couch yet, but so then. The, the first take. Okay, yeah. But then the second Yeah, this is take, the first take the that aired. Right, because yeah. I think they figured, okay, let's let's go again and see if we can get this. Yeah. So they do the Siamese. So the thing that made this one really And it's funny, even more outlandish. Yeah. And not only was the story very funny, but it also, it's Vicki Lawrence who, who crushes it because they are laughing and everything. And then finally, Carol Burnett says like, okay, are you, you know, are you ready or whatever, something like that. And then um, she goes, I don't know, is this... Is this asshole done talking? Does she say that? She calls them that. Yeah, that's yeah, when I they mean, lose it. That's when they all well, lose. It. Yeah, because they they spent you know, I mean, they they had so many characters always, mm -hmm. and each character was so out, outlandish and so individual, and they never wanted to break character. But she had, I think, this note card. Carol did, and mm -hmm. so you know, every time she went to say something, she had to like put it in front of her and turn mm -hmm. because she couldn't stop laughing. And she, right. she, the, these, these people knew it was coming all the time. If it was coming, they were like, Oh God, yeah. here we go. Yeah. And then he goes and then, yeah. And then, so Tim Conway, the second takes says almost tells the same story, but then adds more to it. Yeah. And then finally they think they might get through it. Yeah. And then Carol can't say her line. And then Carol finally says, well, mama. And then yeah. that's when Vicki Lawrence says, that little asshole finished with his story yet? And they all just, they're done. Dick Van Dyke falls off the couch. Tim Conway falls off the yeah. sofa. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's Everybody, great. it's just, yeah. Mm-hmm. Donna. So I think I get why you picked this episode, because you said mm -hmm. it's like one of the funniest outtakes, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. To, I mean, and I, I mean, there's a part of me that, even though I've spent the majority of my life acting on stage or on camera or PRing film or TV, there's a part of me that feels that thinks that outtakes are the best part of mm -hmm. anything ever, especially That's when fair. you're doing a live performance. Like I, yeah. when I, I played the dentist in Little Shop of Horrors off Broadway 20 something years ago. And it was all, you know, it's all, you know, there's the dentist and the doo-wop girls. Mm -hmm. 
and the do-up girls repeat everything the dentist says. Mm -hmm. And I, there was one show that, like, I did the first show so well, apparently, that the audience heard. And the next, the next night, that was opening night, the next night it was packed. Ooh. And I got a standing ovation for walking out on stage. Oh, my gosh. No I pressure. Mean, <laughs> no, I mean, I didn't think, well, I, that, that didn't, that didn't, in retrospect, that, but at the moment I was like, oh my God, this You're is like, amazing. This is awesome. Yeah. Everybody yeah. loves me. Half these people have no <laughs> idea who I am, but word got around, the whatever. And so anyway, and I think the confidence went to my head. So there was the, the this one number, I think it's, it's like the famous dentist song. When I was younger, just a bad little kid, my mama, hey, you'll be a dentist, be a dentist. Da -da. Mm. You have a talent for causing things pain, pain. Anyway, so the do-up girls, and then halfway through the song, there was some line I was supposed to say, and I, 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 it, it left my brain. Oh, my gosh. And I, went, I was singing the song, and then it came, you know, the, the next intro came, and I was supposed to sing, and I just went, but I was still with the beat, and then I turned around and <laughs> to the do-up girls and went, <laughs> and they all just went. Oh, good improv. Imp improvising, yeah, if you hadn't seen right? the show, you might have thought, yeah. Thank you, Carol yeah. Burnett and friends. There you go. Did you get a standing run? <laughs> I wonder. You might have. Yeah, I can't remember, <laughs> but yeah, those were. I mean, that's some of those moments. But there, there was also, you know, not that anybody asked. <laughs> My lawn. No, nobody, colon, Lon. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, in, that, in that same show, the dentist on, it's different from the movie, but on, in the Broadway show, the, the dentist then, after he's eaten by the plant, mm -hmm. then plays the agent, then plays the producer's wife in that song later. <laughs> so you, there's all these ridiculous costume changes. Right. Like he comes out as the agent in the suit, but then like I had to put on a, I think I had my grandmother's Chanel suit on. And by the time I was the third person, there was just no time. And I kept saying, we need to do something. There was just no time. So by the time I came out as the third person, Timur Coburn, you prince you. My name is Bernstein. I'm with NBC. I think I was a net, net, network executive. Yeah. But by that point, I came out with like you were half one high else. heel shoe. Yeah, one men's dress shoe, That's like awesome. a Chanel jacket, but like the slacks. And it, anyway, they said, just keep it. Yeah, that sounds great. I don't know if it. Yeah. I love that. Mm. Long line of improv. Mm -hmm. uh, too bad this is not recorded somewhere so I could see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? It's not, though, I'm sure. I don't know. Right? You're not well, supposed to record those things, but there might be one. Yeah. But what, yeah, but when was that? Oh, you said 20 something. So, well, no, people had cell phones. I don't know. Anyway. No, um, it was, I think it was before cell phone. So, so speaking of acting, <laughs> did you always want to be an actor when you were young? Yeah, because you got on Broadway young, didn't you? Yeah, How but... How did it start? Um, Hold up. Let me say one thing. The key lime pie expert, you grew up in Miami. And what's very what's very rare about you is that you're, you really have like family. Your family goes back to Miami. Like, I mean, in time, like you're from Miami, right? Yeah. Like you have relatives, like how many generations does it go back? A bunch. Like since there was one, <laughs> basically on my, on my mom's yeah, side. Your mom's side. Yeah. Which is majority of people there are not they don't have generations going back that's okay i just want to throw that in there so anyway okay i mean especially not in miami right you know we were there since there was a miami sort of thing mm -hmm. like that side of the family yeah mm -hmm. i guess before that they were in georgia and ohio okay. because florida was spain i guess <laughs> yeah so all right so acting so how did you first get get the bug um well i mean i'm sure if you asked my parents they would say i was i was i came out <laughs> acting and improvising and doing all sorts of things but I, I never thought about it i when i was a kid when i was little really little i wanted to be i, I wanted to be either 
a fireman, a veterinarian, mm. or Perry Mason? Mm. Not a lawyer. I wanted to be Perry Mason. Okay. And me and a friend of mine, we would play a game. And yeah, I'd be Perry Mason, and he was another Mason. Brian May, I don't know. My mother would be Della Street, but no, I, I really don't. I mean, I was always, my father's family is very musical. He's a jazz drummer. His mm -hmm. brother was a jazz pianist. My grandmother was a classical pianist. Her father was a conductor and a flautist. So I was always, I was definitely like playing piano and singing and doing things from a young mm -hmm. age, like two, three, four. But I never thought about being an actor. And then I think two things happened. One was, I guess it was like kindergarten or first grade. And my father's mother, the first thing was, she said she knew, I guess somebody at the school, oh, the principal of my elementary school was my grandmother's friend. Mm -hmm. How weird was that? Every time I got in trouble, the whole family knew about it. But so she said, why don't you join the chorus? And I was like, okay. So then I joined the chorus. And then not too long after that, they were casting Fiddler on the Roof. Yeah, and being from Miami, I was in New York all the time because <laughs> my father's from New York, right. up and down, up north and south. Mm -hmm. So, and my father's mother's from New York and my dad was born here and there, mm -hmm. a lot of them are from this, this area, mm -hmm. this house. Um, yeah, and a producer of a show, somebody had come up to her and said, they needed more village kids in Fiddler on the roof. And so she came to me and said, would you like to sing and dance on stage with a bunch of kids? And I said, okay. Yeah. That, and that's it. That's how it started. And then it's wow. never, it just never, it basically never stopped. But that was, I wasn't auditioning and I wasn't, mm. Amer you know, there was no such thing as American Idol. But <laughs> yeah. that's just kind of, yeah. Hey, you want to do this? Okay. Yeah. And then it never, and here we are. So what other? Thanks, Nana. <laughs> what other? If you're watching. Um, productions have you been in then? Other than um, the two you've so, talked about. Um, oh, well, starting, I guess, chronologically speaking. <laughs> um, I did Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, I was in Gypsy as a newspaper boy. Is that what, what they were called? Newspaper boys? Mm-hmm. When Tyne Daly was Mama Rose. Um, oh, a bunch of stuff. I was, a, I was an anchor. I was the first kids anchor for Channel 33. And they had this segment called Notebook News. So I was the, yeah, I was the kid news anchor. And I'd go to like the zoo and random places and report about this and that and, and the other thing. this is in thing. Miami. This is in Miami, but also sometimes in New York. Okay. Uh, they would do segments all over. And then, and I, then what happened? Boarding school started. I went to high school. So mm -hmm. I went to high school in Andover, Massachusetts at Phillips Academy, where they had an amazing theater program, did a bunch of shows there as mm. well. And then along the way, I also did um, Taming of the Shrew, and I played Grumio. I did a bunch of Shakespeare for a minute. And then after I graduated, uh, the Little Shop of Horrors. Um, and then I was a swing in Rent, Ragtime, Cabaret when it went to Studio 54. What does swing mean? What do you mean? A swing is somebody who's in the, a swing is somebody who's in the chorus, kind mm -hmm. of the, en the ensemble. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, and, but they also often understudy for one okay. of the lead roles. So they can kind of play anything and they can jump in and out yeah, as needed. Swing. You can swing from it. Swingers. I'm a, sw I was a swinger. You really, you got to put that on your bio. <laughs> I know. Put them yeah. here. Swing. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then somewhere along, somewhere along the way. I did my first film. I hadn't done any film at all. Yeah. I got to stop you for a second. 
because there was some. Okay, so oh, originally, okay, hold on. Originally, I was going to interview you for Homebodies Only, the other podcast, with my co-host Diana. Um, unfortunately, and we were still going to do it that way. We were going to upload them to both, right? And Diana, unfortunately, couldn't make it. Um, but I have to ask you because Diana is a huge Golden Girls fan. <laughs> um, there was something on IMDb which I had trouble finding yesterday. Well, were you on Golden Girls or filmed a part for Golden? Like, what's? Please tell the Golden Gr Girls story, please. <laughs> I, I was on one episode. Okay. Of the Golden Girls, I don't even remember how it happened. I think I was ten or eleven. Okay. And it was the one with the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts. <laughs> So I think I don't, and so I was a Boy Scout or whatever yeah. it was, and it's the one where Rose. This kind of has a few layers to it. It's you know in hindsight, but Rose, who uh, Betty White, right? <clears throat> I guess one of the girls loses her teddy bear. It's kind of a famous scene for for okay. that show, and oh, no, it. I think it was Rose's teddy bear actually, and it goes missing, and I think the girl oh. that plays. The girl might be, I forget who that is, but she, anyway, all the boys and girls come over to the house, you know, with Dorothy and Rose and Blanche and Sophia and have a little, whatever, get together. And, and I forget exactly what it was, but somehow, so the girl fesses up and she has the teddy bear and on the oh, way out the door rose is like oh you can have it and then she steals it from her and then slams the door and all the kids go out i mean this is like this is coming back to me yeah i i, I have that was the episode i didn't do yeah. anything you really didn't have any lines you were just you were kind of there mm, yeah but that's but still the, cool the, oh it was still cool and then yeah. i and then i i i ended up bumping into betty white in like 2010 hmm. in la at a dog something charity, one of her dog charity Aww. events. Mm -hmm. And we somehow started doing some improv. Like there was like a meet and greet, but then there was like a thing. And I don't know, I was called up to do something with her. And we were improvising. She must have been 90 by then. I don't. Wow. I don't yeah, I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. So then. Did and you then, tell her? Did great... you say to her, I was on? Well, she said, she was like, you look familiar, sure. which a lot of people say. And they don't know well, why. Yeah. No, it's for real. Yeah. People say no, it to I me all the time. That. I don't. I don't know yeah. why. I should ask why yeah. more. It'd be interesting. Just to take notes yeah. on. But yeah, you look familiar. And I said, well, it could have been from That's crazy the episode where, and somebody took a picture of that moment happening, and it's just her face was perfect. It, she looked like she was in the show. But also, my mom and her sister and her best friends call themselves the Golden Girls. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not all. I wasn't like you know raised to, to be a golden girl or in the show. Or just but right. now that I'm thinking about it, like my mom the connections is Dorothy because my mom has a very B. Arthur personality in that show. <laughs> One of my aunt, my aunts who's been married a few times is Blanche. Blanche, and, and there's Rose. Of course, Grandma was Sophia, <laughs> but th that was years later. Yeah, that's so cool though. Because they're going to all be watching this and sharing it. So I shout out to the Golden right. Girls. That's right. And shout out to the Golden Girls. Does anybody laugh? Shout out. No. So, no. No. I don't think so. Oh. Well, that's, I'm, I'm glad that I got that story because I've been <laughs> dying to ask you about it since, uh, <laughs> since we met almost a year ago in June. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no. I forgot about okay. that. Um, so what about, so you've done a lot, obviously a lot of shows. Did you say, what have you done? Um, you said film and TV, you did Golden Girls <laughs> and, and your news anchor gig. Yeah. My news anchor gig. Well, yeah. I did, I, I, I did other, um, well, that's sort of why I moved one reason why I moved from the East Coast to the West Coast in 2000, early 2002. Mm -hmm. uh, well, one, just to do my own thing, but mm -hmm. as be, having been an actor and a performer for so long on stage and then improv too, I started an improv troupe 
in high school at oh, Phil's cool. Academy at Andover called Under the Bed, which I'm really famous for. I don't know why we picked that name, but every time I go back for whatever, I'm on alumni council there and I'm uh, an admissions, I interview prospective students who want to come. But like one time I went back, they're like, oh my God, you're the founder of Under the Bed. And I was like, what is that? It sounds so familiar. Anyway, they had our Bible that we made of all the improv games. And I was like, oh, oh well, yeah, gosh. we called it that. Rachel Levy, wherever you are. Actually, she doesn't live too far. And anyway, the improv troupe kept going. And those wow. students were actually, they had the same dorm I had one year because it was my house counselor. I know this is like oh too many goodness. angles. But they said, you've got to meet so-and-so because they're in your improv troupe. And then is it I've, still going? It's still going. So it's oh from 1994. Gosh. That's awesome. So junior year, 1995, senior year, mm -hmm. three, four, up until, oh God, 30 years later. And yeah. And then there's one at, so, and then in college, in undergrad at Florida State, we had the Whammo Players, which started out, it broke off from Dad's Garage, which is a pretty famous improv organization right. in mm -hmm. Atlanta. So we did that too. We did all the like traditional improv games, but mm -hmm. yeah, no, I was, I figured that I needed to do TV and film. That's why I went to because LA. it, yeah. And in that, in, in 2002, it wasn't really happening. I mean, so much like you had to go there to do that still. Right. And I figured, you know, there, I'd be a swing forever or I wouldn't get a lead right. in anything. And, right. and a lot of jobs were in mm -hmm. flux. So I moved to LA. I got a part and I've got a lead in a film. I think it was a student film. Mm -hmm. And then somehow that film turned out so well, it became a short official short selection at the Cannes Film Festival that year. Oh, wow. But I also did, I did a couple episodes of Entourage when that was like the show. Did you have lines? The cool show. Yeah, I had you a have couple lines. of lines. Oh my God, I have to go find those. Up. I watched Entourage. <laughs> I loved Entourage. I, I was the, um, <laughs> I had such a strange part. But yeah, that was one of the first <laughs> shows I did. I was the cantor at Ari's Temple, at Jeremy Piven's Temple oh, Synagogue. Okay. And yeah, I don't, I, I mean, I remember getting the part. I remember, yeah, and I, rem, I, re, I remember being on set with all these people and they mm -hmm. all had their sides, their script, their, you know, their lines and their back pockets. But oh. coming from a state, yeah, coming from a stage background, stage? I had my lines and everybody else's memorized like already. Right. And I remember they kept like cutting and it was like 14 takes on this like you two minute scene. And I was, oh I was only 25 and I was like, what's wrong with these people? <laughs> And wow. I mean, I was barely, and, and yeah, and, and then I, because one of the actors kept, I think there was an island nation and he was getting Bermuda and Barbados mixed up, whatever it was. He kept doing the same thing over and over again. He was driving everybody driving insane. Oh. And, and so, but, and I went up to the AD, I went up to the assistant director because I kept waiting to go on and I would have to back up. And then the guy took the, his lines out of his pocket, his sides out. And I said to the AD, I like a 25 year old man, young man, I said, you're allowed to do that. Like, I thought it was illegal or something. Yeah. I was like, I know his lines. And then finally we got, it, it, it got rolling again. And then like the lights broke and they were like lunch. Everybody oh my was, God. but, and I kept improvising too, because right. whoever it was, was taking so long. So Jeremy Piven would come in and he had to talk to me for a minute. And I mm -hmm. just kept saying different things for whatever reason. And being this? partially Jewish enough to know certain things. I was singing random songs that I remembered from, you know, <laughs> as a kid. And and every now and then, I think the director was like, Lon, did you stick to your lines? And Jeremy was like, just, just keep doing what you're doing. It's much better. <laughs> and so we did. And yeah, that was my entourage experience. But That's every time they went back to that temple, they had to call me back because I was, awesome. the, I was the cantor. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It was that. And All right, I'm going to sound like an idiot. I don't yeah, know what a cantor is. Movies. Oh, the cantor is the, not, not the rep. <laughs> I know you think yeah. I am, but I'm not. Little known fact, everybody. Jackie is not Jewish, no. exactly. You might be a little bit. Maybe somewhere, yeah.
Say where you're from again. Sorgates. I know, but that's like a, that's like a, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a New York mm-hmm. thing. It could be anybody. Um, okay. Oh, the cantor is not the rabbi. The cantor is the one who sings. Ah. So when they come okay. up to sing the prayers and do all the things and da, 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 da that's the cantor. Okay. I sound like an idiot. Cause when you say cantor, I think of a decanter, a decanter. So I know it has Ooh. nothing to do with that, but you know, I had to ask, I couldn't pretend. Well, that's fun. It's not wine. Oh God, are we allowed to sponsored by? <laughs> yeah, maybe we can... got a sponsor. Totally, you can show whatever you want. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know case. what I mean. All right. Whew. So you're in LA. We don't need no speaking notes. Yes. How? Did... Okay. So how did you? You're still acting. Then how did you get into PR? It happened. Uh, I mean. Um, I love Long my job. Story I short. love my job. I love my job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, my mother, my mother is like a PR guru. She's retired. I didn't want to say was. I, didn't, I almost was like she's, you know, God rest her soul. But she no, she's alive. She's retired. But my mom has been in PR since before I was born. So I kind of grew up knowing all about it and being around mm-hmm. her at all these major events, but she did not do entertainment PR. Right. Lifestyles and boat shows and uh, lifestyles, did I say? <laughs> lifestyles. Like major hotel, like the Club Rich Med, like these <laughs> kinds of things. Zodiac of North America, all the world's boat shows and famous okay. people, governments. And, so it was hardcore. I learned the hard. Anyway. Right. So, but I would be, go to the office with her. On the mm-hmm. weekends growing up. So I just knew how to do it. And then so from time to time, even before I moved to L.A., I would like help out with this and that and the other thing. And I worked at my mom's office for a little bit after for a few years after I graduated from mm-hmm. undergrad. And anyway. But then when we went to Cannes the first time. With this film that nobody the thought short. was the short. Um, we were kind of abandoned by our producers. Nobody had any money left, I guess. Oh. I don't know what had happened. So then we were there. Now we're now we're in Cannes and we're like, okay, this is cool. What are like and everybody wanted to like, let's party. And I was like, okay, we have to do something with this. Like we're yeah. here. You're at Cannes. Yeah. yeah. And so somebody said, I was like, well, what do we do? And somebody said to me, is, doesn't your mom have a PR firm? I was like, oh, that's right. <laughs> so I called him. I called my mom. I said, what should we do? And she said, write a press release. So I wrote a press release. The internet was so terrible. It was dial up, I think. Mm-hmm. And so I had to fax her the press release. She mm-hmm. redlined it. We got it back. We fixed it up. Then we had, you have to translate a certain amount into French because it's can. Okay. Right. You know, if you're in Con, Venice, you, you know, you, you cater to the yeah. press wherever you are. And so, but yeah. these had to be, and you, and you still, you stuffed, they were press boxes. So mm. in the Palais where the film, all, all the main films are, they were all the, so we stuffed all the press boxes and we had this amazing press release and we had a week of interviews. We mm. had nonstop interviews. And I don't know if anybody knew who we were and that that's how I, had, and then I had a PR firm. And after that, I got clients during that festival and just all wow. along the way. I start, yeah, and I was kind of freelancing, but all of a sudden I had so much work, like a sales company that was repping us saw what I was doing, and so they hired me. And then it was just a a film sales company, then a film distribution company, then another production company. So I went back to LA with some PR work, but like just wanting to do more acting. Right. I got entourage and whatever, but I had a PR firm. And it wow. just it, it it kind of happened on its own. I didn't know even that, what I'm I was doing I entourage. I didn't, oh, yeah. I didn't know that story. I'm glad I didn't because yeah. I, maybe well, I yeah, would have well, asked. Because also, when you're acting and things, when you're acting, I mean, you have you have so much downtime as an mm. actor a lot in a, in a TV series or in a, God, that, that that was when we had TV. Um, that was just when Netflix and everything was starting. Mm. Right before maybe, but 
Or on a film, you have so much downtime because, you know, you're needed for whatever. And then depending upon so many variables, you can be in your trailer for hours or whatever with nothing to do. So at first it was fun to like hang out and bring my friends and my family and play video games. And then I was like, I have press releases to write and I have media to call and I would be up in media list and ready. So I, it was, and people would always say, don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody you're an actor too my PR, some PR people, except for one person, there was one person I'm actually quoted somewhere in the, um, in the Hollywood reporter, Mm -hmm. there was one of my mentors in the film business, Robbie Little, one of the most amazing original sales agents, film sales, film sales company, little film company. And he saw me, I think, switch to just when I was in PR mode, I was in PR mode, I guess like an actor. Like when I was mm-hmm. a waiter in a restaurant mm-hmm. in college, I, I would always call the kitchen backstage. You do whatever back there, but then you're going out and on the floor. Mm-hmm. But he said, Lon, don't hide it. He said, I, told, I tell all of our filmmakers, all of our clients that you're an actor, that my publicist is an actor too. Yeah. And he's in cool stuff and he's really good. And so that changed, that changed my mind. And yeah. then I realized I could do both or you could do, yeah. Because yeah. that was a... I think a lot of actors actually go go through that, have gone through that, where you're doing in between the acting gigs you really, really want, or in between your auditions and whatever, you have to, most people have to do some job. They have to mm-hmm. work at whatever to make a living. Yeah. And then you hopefully have a job that's flexible enough where, you know, that's why a right. lot of actors, you know, it's like, wait, wait, what's that? What do you call what do you call a group of actors? A restaurant? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, 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 but you know, it's because you have a flexible job where you can make enough money and then you get somebody to cover a shift or you're doing, right. I just had this amazing, I didn't think at the time it was amazing. I didn't want to necessarily be doing it, but it turned out to be like the best of both worlds. Yeah. I had an actual PR firm dealing with basically anything else I was doing. Mm-hmm. And I was the boss, so I could, yeah, I could leave whenever. But I was working for other people for a minute here and there, and mm-hmm. everybody was usually cool about it. I was like, I have an audition in Studio City. At... Can I? <laughs> That's cool. And then they would be as long as I'm invited to set. When you get the job, then you, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like Wells Fargo. <laughs> right. Yeah, it was the coolest. Jo- it was the coolest corporate job ever. I got milk and cookies on my first day. I was the executive Aww. assistant to the president <laughs> of retail banking for like LA County and San. I don't know. Yeah, I I have too many stories. You have a lot of stories. We need to start That's a podcast. It. You do. You do, and write a book. Um, it's interesting how people are like, don't tell people you're an actor, but then probably with acting, I, I think it's different now though because. I think we've always been told that like you can only really be one thing. You how can you be more than one thing? Then you're not good at any of them. You know that what uh, Jack of all trades, master of none. But I don't think that's true. And I think more people are. You can do more than one thing. As I am. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. You know. It's, and there's it, more it's, to you than that. You know. Of course, and I think it's it's really interesting because. You know, my mother, who I suppose was, I mean, she's just the best mom ever anyway, but she, she was a hardcore businesswoman. I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to mess with her when you're on her good side. She's the most fun, loving, gracious, generous, amazing person ever. If you cross her, you're dead to her. Like you just don't, it's scary. (laughs) So I, I got a lot of that from her, but she was one of the first people who said, cause there was at one point where. I was starting my firm, so I was freelancing, but then I was also like teaching German. And then with the group, this organization, this company I was teaching German through, Mm -hmm. I ended up getting jobs as a language coach and a dialect coach for like really famous actors. And so I was freelance PR. I was teaching German to like kids who needed to learn it for school or maybe who had a German background and didn't speak it all, all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. And then I was also, and Spanish and 
some other languages, but then I was also like a dialect coach. I became Sasha Baron Cohen's dialect coach. Oh, wow. I think the NDA wore out by now on Bruno and <laughs> it's way over now, but he didn't, you know, like, so when he was in Austria, he could actually, and he needed to know how to speak, you know, how to speak Viennese German there. I mean, it's a big difference between the way they talk in Vienna versus sure. Berlin versus, so yeah. Yeah. I ended up doing all of that. And then I was a barista at, in Los Feliz, which is not how you pronounce it, but that's how they say it in Los <laughs> Angeles. And yeah, I ended up doing all these different things. But it was my, when I started complaining, I was like, ah, this is too much. I just want to be a famous actor. Yeah. <laughs> my mother was the one who said, be glad that you have a diversified portfolio. Right. It not only makes you more well rounded, you're going to need it. And yeah, it's true because I wasn't going back to being a waiter. No. <laughs> No, not, um, not, yeah. Well, I think it's cool Nothing too. Wrong. Right. Even though, at, so working in PR, you also know the side of the actor. Like, you know, you really I'm know sure. all perspectives, right? Yeah. Like, make sure your <laughs> client is dressed properly. <laughs> <laughs> You're dressed. Something wrong. I found a rip in my heat, in my shirt. Oh, no. Oh, Esther doesn't oh. look like me, but she's, um, <laughs> Yeah, no, it was, it's, yeah, because I spent the first half of my life in front of the camera or on the stage. And then right. I got around to the other side. And I was, I also worked with, I had, Mally Finn was w one of the greatest casting directors of all time for film. And a good friend of mine who has, he's his own casting director now for a long time, David Rappaport. He was her assistant early, early on. This was back in the early days of LA. And I remember a couple times I would be the reader mm -hmm. for auditions. You know, so when actors would come in, you would be You'd the be person like the behind the part. camera. Okay. Yeah. So, and, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. and they also, so they have an eye line because, mm -hmm. you know, you can't look in the camera. You have to look like just over here. And, you know, <laughs> hopefully some, somebody's giving you something so that you're, you're be able to respond. Yeah, I mean? yeah, in in some kind of a manner that's interesting. So you get the job. And then I remember auditioning and then she's seeing the tape and she saying to David and some other people, she was like, is Lon acting? I was like, oh, my God, I'm so I'm so good. Mally Finn can't tell <laughs> if I'm acting or not. But and then in doing PR, too, then you're really on the other side. But it's kind of like I think these two things, I think all actors should have to work in a casting. Mm -hmm. office on the other side yeah and just like i think anybody who ever wants to be a pedestrian in the world has to live in manhattan for a year there you go those two things can go a long way for people <laughs> yeah. but in pr you really get the other side i mean there's you know you're yeah. then you're like yeah you're in yeah. You, you all the inner workings yeah are happening and you're privy to a lot of info yeah and get to see how it all works. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, like, I love that. Um, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, there's so many questions. <laughs> all right. Let me just touch on. Let, can we just touch on the key lime pie expert thing? Because, or create, didn't you tell, okay. So when we started messaging, um, didn't you say your family, I think your family created like the first key lime pie. And I was like, yeah, right. Whatever. <laughs> well. I mean, you know, we weren't there, but that is the story. <laughs> mm -hmm. The story is that, yeah, that it was my great grandmother and my great great grandmother basically invented the key lime pie. And that part of the family, they owned some land in Miami Beach. And I mean, that was like, and, you know, anybody a long time ago. It's like, now you walk around, I own parts of Manhattan. Well, <laughs> it's like, we're, we're in a swamp. Why are you going to buy anything there? It's like, oh, thank God they didn't sell it. Like, but they rented the space for whatever reason. This is like how mm -hmm. anything I feel, I feel like as we're doing this interview, I'm learning about myself. I'm learning things I didn't know. How did I get into <laughs> acting? It all just happened. Hey, do this. Okay. You want to do this? Sure, sure. So they owned some land and then they rented out some people put a crab shack on it hmm. and all they, they, and 
for stone crab season, I guess. Whoever discovered stone crabs, maybe? I don't know where I'm going with this. But because the story is that I think somebody actually on Long Island or somewhere invented the key lime pie. It's not true. Um, I don't know how that would have happened. But, but uh, well, yeah, because key limes are from there. You can't get them. Right. I mean, yeah. That then you couldn't go into no. like Hanford's no. and yeah, so or Fairway mm -hmm. or Zabar's. But um, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, they rented this and they put this crab shack on there. Anyway, that crab shack is now Joe's Stone Crabs, which is the most famous stone crab restaurant maybe in the world. And they start. They were just selling key lime pies and crabs and mm -hmm. whatever wow. potatoes. I don't know. And so, but that recipe that I have that's in my grandmother's cookbook, mm -hmm. just somewhere, um, which was written down by, I think, her mother or mother-in-law or grandmother-in-law, was written down before the Joe Stone Crabs showed up on the world scale. And I, I just remember one day, like, we looked at the Joe's, everybody's like, nobody will put the, because key lime pie is a you guys and gals, people, all of us, key lime pie is a very serious thing. Yeah. There are only five ingredients. And one of the ingredients is not green. I mean, it is. It's key lime, but it's not like you don't, if the key lime pie it is green, green, don't eat it. No. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's egg yolks. Mm -hmm. Egg yolks, sweet and condensed milk key lime juice and then graham cracker crust and then some zest from the key lime. That's it. So the recipe we have in this old cookbook, well, I should have brought it out and just showed the people, the folks at home. <laughs> We're all at home. Um, it's the exact same recipe of Joe for that Joe stone crabs has that they wow. eventually put up on their site, wow. which, which you couldn't get, you know, like there's a lot of places where, can, they what's the it. recipe for your, yeah. they're like, right. Yeah. So wow. we've been making key lime pies since 1722. <laughs> no, not, not that early. I didn't know the Joe's stone crab story either. I knew about yeah, Joe's. Yeah. Jo, it was just a yeah. shack and whoever mm -hmm. the people started it. Yeah. I hope I don't get in trouble. I could get in lots of trouble just for, yeah. Who knows? Should we talk about the. Do you want to talk about the royals in my family or the Jewish mafia? That'll really get me in trouble. <laughs> sure. Whatever. Whatever gives you less trouble or. I love and the key lime pie. And then the, you make the, and then you make the whipped cream separate. And right. Or on top and mm -hmm. you don't kind of smother it, but you can let everybody do it. Do you anyway. have to squeeze more key lime onto it or you're no. Like when no. you eat it. No. Because it's all. No, it's that's ready. What that's what I thought you told me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I thought there was a whistle. I thought you were blowing the whistle. In. As, why not? <laughs> no, you mix it. It's, it's, it's like two. It's, it's the egg yolks and the sweetened condensed milk. Yeah. And then I think it's, is it three quarters of a cup of key lime juice? But mix all that in. And that's that. And then you've already made your graham cracker crust, which, you know, smash the graham crackers and butter. Mm -hmm. You bake it. And then you pour the stuff in. 15 minutes. It comes out. You're done. Chill it. Done. That's it. And then okay. I then you make your fresh whipped cream and I put vanilla extract in a little Grand Marnier. Huh. But that's my version. In the whipped I got cream. it from my dad. My Grand Marnier is like my dad's. My dad makes a few, he has a few recipes. Mm -hmm. Not very many, but he makes like he makes an amazing rack of lamb. He makes ribs. He makes stuff like that, but shrimp scampi. We used to go fishing a lot, in Florida. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't know how to bake or anything. So his, his famous dessert, he, I forget what he calls them. Strawberry, str strawberries, Imperial, <laughs> which is not a thing, but it is. And all it is, is st fresh strawberries soaked overnight in like a ton of Grand Marnier. <laughs> That's so like one strawberry and you're wasted. It's great with whipped yeah. cream. Thing. Yeah. Sounds good. So I, I stole that. <laughs> but I remember my grandmother used to do that too. She used to pour when she would, she would make, she would always make fre fresh whipped cream and she was always putting little things in it. I always ask what she was mm -hmm. just adding stuff to it. 
I've never done that. Yeah. I've, I've she would made always, yeah. cream, but I mean, I'm a, I have to follow the directions. <laughs> I don't try to play too much with stuff. Yeah. I'll have to send you the, that's the thing about me is I don't, except for the key lime pie, I never remember recipes or mm. ingredients or how long mm -hmm. anything takes. I just kind of like. I'm finally remembering meatloaf, my mom's meatloaf recipe. Finally. Mm. I've made it a million times, but I'll like lose the sheet of paper or something. And I'm like, Ma, I have stuff to call. I'm like, what do I bake it on again? 350. Cream of mushroom soup. 350. Uh, that, that was one of the five dishes my mom's turned into an amazing cook but when i was a kid i think she made five things too she made five things that was it, it was meatloaf fried chicken liver and onions my, oh my mom didn't make that i know she wouldn't eat it though but I, I parmesan oh she made parmesan things like eggplant parmesan chicken parmesan oh nice yeah. yeah i can make i can make chicken parmesan now she makes all kinds of stuff I send her pictures of what she's like. Take a picture of what you've made. Like she wants to. She likes. Yeah, to. she just is like oh, your your presentations are out of this world. <laughs> Mine never look like that. Oh, yeah. My mom is a good cook, but she's she's burnt out from it. <laughs> She'll still do it, but it's like, and I just, I, I'm not really. I don't enjoy it. Sometimes I want to, but yeah. <laughs> It's a good semester anyway. activity sometimes. <laughs> um, what is something you can't leave the house without? You have to have on you, with you. Not a cell phone, keys, you know, that stuff. Um, obviously not my brain. Um, <laughs> I think these rings. I was just. That's what I thought you were going to say. I think I was going to, I was going to say a rose quartz in my pocket or something, mm. but I don't have one always, but these <laughs> ring, I, I almost never take these two rings off, but if I do, I seem to always have, even if I just go outside to chop wood, I, I don't know. Mm. Oh, and this, this bracelet. Okay. I, I usually never leave home without these things for some yeah. reason. Wow. Yeah. Sentimental. Yeah, what? sometimes it's my herbal supplements. No, that's not always, though. I'm saying, like, running out to the, you know, close by store, you kind of still feel like you have to have it on you. So, I think yeah, it's I went, your... one of, I had a friend's dad or my girlfriend's dad or somebody from a while back. I remember I went over to their house once to chop wood. I, I like, I ran out of wood. I was in the chopping wood phase. And, <laughs> yeah. I never, I, Jim's never worked for me and stuff. I just, and, and I remember like, and he asked me, he's like, Lon, do you always wear those every time you leave the house? It was yep. the first time anybody asked me. And I was like, wow. I, I suppose I do. Do you take them off to sleep? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes yeah. I take them off as soon as I get in the house. Yeah. I'm like that too. I, it's like my protection. I, I, it's hard to, I don't know. They just, they yeah. need to be with me. You feel <laughs> naked without them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I wear them when I'm naked. Something funny? Sorry. <laughs> See, we need a about... new Carol Burnett show. I thought me and my friends were going to be that. And it might not be too late. No. There's been no show like yeah. that since then. Not really. I mean, there have been versions. There have been. Especially with AI. Oi. No. Oi. Um, <laughs> now I've lost my train of thought. Um, Oi. You see, you is... turned Jewish. Oi, 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 vey. Um, oi, vey, I need a canter to sing me a song already. Baruch Hashem, somebody sing me something or other over here. Some swaggeries. Swaggeries. Yeah, sing, uh, come to swaggeries swag and sing me a song. Um, the dreidel song. <laughs> no, wrong holiday. Where are we? I don't know when this is going to be out. Uh, it's going to be out for Easter. I think oh, it's gonna that be might be out for it's Passover. Gonna be it's going to be after Easter. Maybe, maybe yeah. Passover. Um, what Wait. can't you... Uh, <laughs> what? I was trying to think of a Passover song. I don't know. Okay. Oh, there are Passover songs. Yeah. I believe it. We knew this was going to happen. We knew this was going to I know. Davi, um, <laughs> People are going to think I'm what? so Jewish. I'm not. 
What? No. The, oh, I just have to go to that because the best thing you ever said to me, which I, I never heard before, is you said you're a cashew. Because <laughs> yeah. you were raised Catholic and Jewish and you're a cashew. Now, did you coin hmm. that word? Did you create that word? Or was that a, a thing? I've never heard that before. I don't know. It's been so hmm. long. Did your family I, I might have said it by... <laughs> no, no, okay. no. I mean, yeah, I would, yeah, when people asked always, like, they, that's just what I would say. Yeah. I was cashew. I think you invented it. Yeah, okay. you know, like, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Rosh Hashanah meets Palm Sunday, meets Easter, meets Yom Kippur, meets, <laughs> and then my nanny, I had a nanny who took me to an AME church, and I learned gospel. First, it was funny because, and then I mean, a kind of one time was it a rabbi or a priest? I think it was a rabbi told me that I was the Jew, the cashew, and the lotus. <laughs> I was like, So is that a Jewish Catholic Buddhist? Because that sounds cool. Yeah, I like that one. But I remember that I went to my friend's Methodist youth group later on, it was the best youth group. But then I remember going in and I was like, and like, there was, you know, there was communion, I guess, but I was like, wait, they're not, they're not doing it right. And I don't know any of the songs. It was all the, the only songs I knew were anything you would have sung ever at a Catholic church or a synagogue or an AME Baptist church. So I knew all gospel and I didn't know any of the like Protestant hymns until like later in choruses at Andover, mm -hmm. and in, you know, mm -hmm. then you sing all that stuff. Yeah. All things bright and beautiful. I don't know what they were talking about. I was like, Jesus, Lord, Satan, get thee behind me. I don't know what, you know. <laughs> total praise, total praise. Baruch Hashem. See, you're, you're very well-rounded. I mean, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is something you can't live without? And it can be, you know, superficial, deep. What is something I can't live without? What's the first thing that comes to mind? You know what? With the first, lumbar support in the car. Mm. <laughs> when I bought my last car, though, they, 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 I don't know. I just thought about that. They said, what, what do you, do you want? I don't, I don't want a backup camera. The only time I've backed into a car was looking into a backup camera. Mm. I remember they were like, what, what, just what? What are the amenities you want? I was like, a big sunroof and lumbar support for my back. Because my back went out 10 years ago. Hmm. And did they give it to you? Yeah. And I still don't have a backup camera. That's good. What yeah. is the lumbar support? What does it entail? Like, what does what they do? It's, it's, it's the, it, there's a button you push in the car. Oh. And it, it, it makes the seat go in from the back where the bottom of your back is. So it's, it pushes... Mm. So you're never hunched or you're never like that. It aligns you. It, yeah. It's total alignment. Cool. German cars have. I don't know if maybe all cars have. I it. had one German car. She was the psycho. Oh, the psycho BMW. Yeah. That'll have Psycho happen. hot. hot what was the girlfriend. question? What can't you live without? And you said lumbar support. Oh, lumbar support. <laughs> That's interesting. Hey. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'm sure nature. I could ask. Nature, yes. That, that, I, I think that's true about you. I think so, too. Getting outside every day. I could live out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll say one more thing about you. you. You walk your cats outside, like in the woods. They come with you in the woods, right? And I had never yeah, we, heard of yeah. that, anybody doing that. Yep. We go for yeah. walks, not on leashes. Not on leashes. Yeah. No, everybody's doing their thing, and we all go to the same area. And then they'll find some trees to climb and do things on, and they do their thing. <laughs> then we walk down the other way, and we go down to the creek, and we all hop on rocks. And so they stay yeah. close by. To they you? stay in a vicinity. Okay. For a while, and if I if I there we would be like dogs. See, I grew up with dogs. I didn't have cats till later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'll do like the dog thing. I'll be like, Phew. yeah, can't do it. You know, I'll do a whistle or something. And, and they'll come. They'll come running. 
And yeah. sometimes they just do their own thing and I'm done and I come into the house and then they'll just come in when they want. All right. So why don't you tell everyone do. your cat's names? You have two boys. I have two boys. Bram, who is a wolf cat. He's a black what? and white, mm -hmm. long haired, black and white, long haired Maine Coon, maybe. What do you call it? And then Jupy, a.k.a. Action Jackson. A.K.A. Duke Anjou II. <laughs> He's an orange tabby. Um, and I always wanted to call Bram Brom. Remember, I kept calling him Brom. Too, yeah, and you're like, why Brahms. do you keep saying that? I'm like, I don't know. It's <laughs> obviously Bram. Bram. They have so many names. Bram. Bram. And we had our dear Blue and Prim, mm. who, who um, all cats go to heaven. So yeah. they're they're watching from yeah. everywhere. And Bram and Jupy, don't they have their own uh, Instagram page? They do. I'll put that in the description. Cause... They do. I don't know what it's. I don't even know what it's called. Isn't it called Archduke? Something. That's the name of it. But is it? Oh. Or maybe it's Action Jackson and Bram dot com. Not dot com. <laughs> At Action Jackson. At no, I, don't... Act, some... I put my. I don't have anything nearby. I didn't want to. Oh, for some reason, That's I have this good. playbill from Beetlejuice. That was weird. That's funny. Oh, and I have this other play. John Hayden, if you're watching. Here it is. I found what it. What I found. Impassioned and break. This is the best monologue in it <laughs> ever. It's got like, oh, I paid for parking at the hall at the standard 25 Ooh. years ago. Wow. I guess I better, I better get my car. Got to go. It's called Action yeah. Jackson and Bram, all mixed, all one. And it says Archdukes, Bram, and Jupy. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You know. All right. Well, I guess that's 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 it for me. Really? Because I have a bunch of questions now. Yeah. For me? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no one wants to Next, hear about that. Everybody wants to <laughs> Next hear. Next episode. Next time. Yeah. Next time on Made, <laughs> Jayquil. Bloopers. Jayquil. That's my new name. Two outtakes. This whole yeah. th this was an outtake, right? This was a rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was doing the merengue. I think they were doing the merengue. I think you're right too. <laughs> and he couldn't. He couldn't. Couldn't go like normal like that. I can't. I should have watched it before this. That's been pretty good. I'm going to have to watch it after. Yeah. It got famous well, on my Facebook. Really? He also had like one earplug in. People. Oh, and Tim was, Conway. Yeah. Which was funny. Like at first you forget it's, it's when I was watching it, I was like, oh, he has earbuds. I was like, he can't have earbuds in. And then I'm like, that's not earbuds because they didn't have they earbuds didn't back have... then. It was an earplug. I guess. Uh, yeah. It was because he was, a, is, he was like, a kid his... and, and then mama mm -hmm. was mama and then. Vicky Lawrence was mom, and then Carol Burnett was her daughter. Eunice yeah. was the daughter, and yeah. what's his face was. Yeah. Okay. Harvey Corman wasn't in that one. And he plays the dad? I can't remember. Was Harvey Corman in that? He wasn't in that one, no. But he was Ed? Like he played. I don't know. Did he? <laughs> well, Ed was Dick Van Dyke. No, he was Dan. Oh, Dan. Dan. He was Dan. I don't know. It's the. Oh. Okay. It's all about, it's all about, about the, the elephant. elephant. Yeah. It's all about the all elephant right. in the room. <laughs> That'll be the title of this episode. I love it. Yeah? Uh, sure. Whatever. The what? elephant in the room. The elephant in the room. The all elephant right. not in the room. <laughs> well, I guess that's it. Thank you so much for finally coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to SAG after for stopping the strike so I could come on because we didn't know what that was, was happening. That was part of the problem. That was part of the So we yeah, did what we were problem. supposed to do. Yes. All right. Respect. <laughs> Maximum respect. That's right. All right. Well. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. Bye. A member of the BTRP Media Network.